Um, good morning, everybody. The webinar will start in five minutes. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jay Tonsger, and I am the marketing coordinator for resortsandlodges.com and Track Hospitality Software. Today, we have a great presentation in store for everyone from Doug Kennedy of the Kennedy Training Network. Here are some quick reminders. Mute your phone if you're hearing feedback. 
Um, the webinar is being recorded and will be shared online within 24 hours of the broadcast. If we have time, questions will be taken at the end of the webinar. As you know, resortsandlodges.com is one of the leading travel websites for independent properties and hospitality companies. Resortsandlodges.com also offers digital marketing solutions, including pay-per-click, search engine optimization, website development, and email marketing. Track hospitality software, which includes Track Pulse and Track PM, is our all-in-one guest commu communication cloud for hospitality properties. Doug has been a regular contributor to the hotel and lodging industry's most prominent publication since 1996, and we're excited for him to be able to share more than two decades of industry experience with all of you. Today's webinar will be focused on overcoming objections and securing the sale. So without further ado, here's Doug Kennedy with Overcoming Objections and Securing the Sale. All right, well, thank you very much, Jay, and welcome to everyone all around the world, really, uh, especially US, Canada, Mexico, Caribbean, and everywhere else that you're joining us from today. Um, as Jay mentioned, I'm Doug Kennedy with Kennedy Training Network. We are an, an alliance partner of resorts and lodges and specifically track pulse, call and lead tracking. So I know most of you have the track pulse system. Some of you are resorts and lodges uh, clients as well, or maybe you're just using resorts and lodges and lodges and you haven't used track pulse yet. But regardless, I hope to bring value for everyone for joining me today, for giving up your time. Most of our mutual clients here are resorts, vacation rental companies, or hotels that do a lot of leisure business. So it is time right now where the peak revenue is generated. And so I know how hard it is for you to get to us. Um, as a result, this will be actually be one of our shorter webinars here that we'll be doing today. And we have a couple of screens going, so if, depending on how you're watching me and what device you're on, um, I'm actually presenting, obviously, if you can see on the webcam, I have the, the PowerPoint deck behind me, so you may want to just enlarge that and watch it. If you're on a smaller device, you may want to, I'm also doing the screen share, so you can watch that and just keep the webcam clicked in a, in a smaller frame, so whichever works best for you. So anyways, it's time to jump right into our topic uh, today, which is overcoming objections and securing the sale. And when we made the agenda for our webinar series, which I do these, by the way, every other month for the Resorts and Lodges Track Pulse clients, and then a couple of times a year, we present industry-wide ones promoted to everyone. But these particular ones are exclusive and designed just for your clients. So we're thinking about the way most of us are. It's peak time, as I mentioned. Um, maybe you do some winter business if you're a ski resort or you have fall color business if you're a cabin rental company. Um, but Or if you're the Caribbean, maybe this is getting into a slower time for you because, of course, your peak time might be in the winter when everyone else has, has cold weather. But yeah, even at that, summer business is very important. And although most of our guests have already booked in advance, it is the work we do now to secure those last few bookings, to fill in those gaps, and top off the occupancy to maximize our profits. You know, we have to pay expense, owners of the hotels and resorts and the, and the rental companies, you have to pay the expenses year round. And this is the time that is the most essential for the success of our businesses. So, we're gonna look at five different topping areas. Securing the sale is a natural next step in a reservation sales conversation. We will explore the fact that closing the sale benefits everyone, including and especially the caller. We will review primary closing techniques, which is the first initial attempt to secure the sale. Hopefully our caller will say, sure, let's do it. But of course, a lot of times they hesitate. So then we'll move into exploring the different reasons why callers hesitate when, they, when we attempt to secure the sale. And based on what they say then, we will know what to say next in our secondary closing techniques. All right, so jumping right into it then, you know, it's interesting. We This is actually the start of my 30th year. Last month, I started my 30th year of doing training. And although I do present training for hotel sales, I do training for guest services, for vacation rentals, I do property owner relations, um, but by far and away, the topic I believe I'm most known for and that I do still to this day, the most frequently, is reservation selling. 
We also have um, a lot of our clients that have track pulse and listen to real calls and many others that don't have that um, are using us for telephone mystery shopping. So I hear a lot of real calls from real callers and I hear also mystery shops from our mystery shopping team here in our office in Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. And what I hear is a lot of the times it's the agent, the reservation sales agent that is nice and personable and friendly that does everything, but they don't want to go that extra step to securing the sale. Now, yesterday I was at a very interesting client, the Charles Hotel at Harvard Square in Cambridge. And we did a, a full day class there. Actually, it was four people. And that hotel believes so much in transient, independent, you know, non-group reservations. They actually had me there for the whole day. So we had time. We did an activity that I often do in my on-site training where we had people come up with a call story. So they all had a reason that they were calling the other hotels in Cambridge. And then they did an inquiry call and they reported back the results. And what they found is that two of them ended up at brand call centers, okay? And the brand call centers did almost nothing to sell, but the one thing they did was hammer, 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 hammer on clothes. Do you wanna book it? You know, we're almost sold out. Now, in fact, the Charles Hotel knew they were not probably almost for sure, not almost sold out because they had the citywide availability data. But that call center person said, you want to book it? You want to book it? You sure you don't want to book it? We're almost sold out. That is being pushy, okay? But in fact, the one agent that was nice out of the, each, each of my participants called a different hotel. Three of them were rude and pushy. Two of them were especially rude and pushy. The fourth one, though, was super nice that engaged in a conversation that sounded friendly. That, that person did everything, but they didn't ask to secure the sale. And that's what we need to make sure that we do. So what I found was reinforced yesterday. What I found though in 30 years, it is the nicest reservation salesperson that is the most friendly and helpful and kind and courteous and personable, but they don't want to ask for the sale. So if you're looking in the mirror right now and you're saying, oh, that might be me because it's hard for me, Doug, I want to remind you of this. The caller in reservation sales, the caller calls us, okay? So that sure makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? Remember, they started this conversation. She went online, she looked at her iPad, she maybe went to her smartphone, she looked at options, and then she said, you know what, I'm gonna give an old fashioned phone call, and they called you. It is not that you called her and telemarketed her, okay? So remember then, the caller benefits first of all, because they lock in the rate, and they ensure availability. Okay, now I can sit here and say this in a webinar, but maybe you're that new agent that just started and you're thinking, well, I don't know, Doug, I'm still un uncomfortable with that. Well, just talk to your experienced coworker sitting next to you or just hang in there another week or two because I assure you that this is going to happen. You're going to have this woman here. She's going to call you back. She's going to say, hello, called yesterday. Now I'm ready. And you're going to have to tell her, oh, unfortunately, we're sold out. Okay, and then she's going to say, sold out? What? Nothing? No, nothing at all. How many rooms do you have? 192. 192 rooms and not even one? And she might even say, what if the president came? So remember, they called you. They have a need for our product, okay? And the other thing is, she might call back. You might have a room or a suite or a condo or a home. You might have something, but now the rate changed because your revenue manager noticed that demand was really high and bumped up that rate. So now you have the same room that yesterday she thought was expensive at $300 for a view room, and now it's 350, okay? Try explaining that. So if anybody feels sorry for the callers and you don't wanna be that pushy agent, remember, closing the sale, securing the sale benefits everybody, all right? Now, of course, your company also makes money and secures another reservation, and that's really key, all right? Because we need the company to do well. The reason we need the company to do well leads to our next point, because your colleagues in operations benefit from more guests and therefore more job security. So we have some employees of resorts. Now again, we have so many different clients here, Jay, 
We have uh, with resorts and lodges being in the mix and then all the track pulse clients that we have. But, you know, some of your hotels, some of your resorts, some of your vacation home rental companies. So not everything applies to everybody. But if you're a hotel or a resort, you have to bell staff, you have to wait staff. And their jobs are really reliant upon reservations to bring in guests, okay? Because that's how they make most of their salary for the bartender, the wait staff, the, the bell staff, the door staff. It's gratuities, all right? I know because I started as a bellman uh, quite a few years ago. It was my first job in the industry. Secondly, though, everybody needs job security from the company doing well, all right? Another word for money or revenue is currency. All right, and it's a word that translates a little bit better in Latin around the world. Currency is a generic word for money, okay? And currency also is a word we use for electrical currency. Electrical currency has to flow, all right? It flows into our home when we plug in that fan or we plug in the lamp and it flows out of the device and it powers the device. Currency powers your company, all right? now. I know your front desk might be happy if they come into work and say, hey boss, how many check-ins tonight? Oh, none, none at all. None, awesome, that's great. However, most front desk people are smart enough to know this is not a good thing long-term, all right? No check-ins, no job. Now, probably you're not gonna go down to no check-ins, but when occupancy drops, there's an employee that is directly impacted and that is the man or the woman that is cleaning rooms in your housekeeping department. All right, because those jobs are staffed according to hotel occupancy. So we have a really important role. And that's really the most important thing I have to share with you today is the closing the sale benefits everyone. Because again, the nicest reservation salespeople that are really good at everything else are, are often the least uh, likely to attempt to close the sale. All right, now, next subject. When is the best time to try to close, to try to secure that sale? Typically, right after we close the rate, all right? So, as we've covered in the other webinars, they call you, you're gonna get their dates, you're gonna get the number of adults and children, you're gonna find out if they stayed before, you're going to search, enter, and then you're going to ask, what I talk about in almost every webinar. The most important question you can ask, which is, hey, as I'm checking the rates in my system, do you have any questions for me? Okay, because there's something they did not find online that made them call you. Okay, so you wanna ask that, and then you answer the question. You provide information about the experience of being a guest with you, and also the accommodation that you're selling. And right after we quote the accommodation, always, always, always ask for the sale, okay? But sometimes you get a call that goes a little bit off of our traditional pattern. Sometimes the caller calls up and says, hello, I wanna make a reservation. Do you have it available? And you say, what are your dates? How many people? Yes, it's available. They say, perfect, okay? When the caller gives you a strong buying signal right here, she's just happy to have a place to stay. That sounds good, perfect. Okay, so you do have availability. What is the rate for the dates, all right? And in that case, when you get the buying signal, it's time to zip up talking and start closing, all right? Now, if you're rated by a resort, rated by Forbes or AAA or preferred hotels or leading hotels like many of our clients, you know, they still want you as you're making the reservation to offer ground transportation, to, to off, offer to make dining reservations or spa reservations or recreation. So I do acknowledge that. But the point is, get the money, all right? Now, most of the time, though, you're going to have the conversation. You're going to engage them in uh, a little bit of a description about what they need to hear about the resort or if you're selling a home, what's in the in neighborhood, the area of the home. Um, and then you're going to present a couple of accommodation rates and prices and options. <clears throat> right after you say that, I want you to try to secure the sale. So we have four different methods that I'm going to cover in the webinar today. Um, I'm not real big on scripting. If you've been with me before, you know it's not Doug Kennedy's way. So therefore, I kind of give you a menu to choose from according to the situation that you have and the caller you have on the line. 
All right. So trial close, secure it for you close, choice of options, and the assume the sale. All right. So the trial close is really good. When you have the caller that tells you right up front, they do not want to make a commitment. Okay. Now, this person says, and you answer the phone, by the way. And th by the way, they call a number they see at your website that says four reservations, call here. And you answer, good morning, hotel reservations. This is Douglas. How can I assist you? And they say, hi, I don't want to make a reservation. <laughs> I just called with a question. Now, sometimes when I'm working with our track post clients and I sit with them and I listen in to calls or I'm sitting in a reservation office live and I hear somebody taking a call and I hear them quoting a rate and they don't ask to make the reservation. When the call's over, I say, uh, why didn't you ask to make the reservation? And they say, oh, Doug, that, that person there, they were just calling to get a price. They said they didn't want to make a reservation. They just wanted a price. And then I kind of give them the look. You know, the same look I gave my 18 year old son last night. You know what I'm talking about, parents. And I say, they didn't want to make a reservation. They were just curious to call for a price. Okay, can you imagine this? Can you imagine in today's world, 2018, people have nothing better to do than to call a bunch of places and get a bunch of prices. Can you imagine a couple so bored after dinner? Hey honey, what do you want to do tonight? Should we watch a show on TV? No, let's call some hotels just to get a price. Okay, where do you want to call? They're not just calling to get a price. But you don't want to then ignore their remark and be pushy. And they say, hi, I don't want to make a reservation. And you say, which of those can I confirm for you? That would be a little bit uncomfortable. It would cause some dissonance. So what we're going to say instead is a trial close. We're going to say, now I know you say after you answer the question after you go over rates. Now I said, I know I, you said you weren't quite ready, but if you like, I can lock that in for you now, okay? And that's where we hopefully get, there, get them to say, oh, sure. Now, depending on your confirmation policies, okay, traditional hotels, like the Charles Hotel yesterday, they take the credit card just to hold the reservation as long as you cancel 48, or maybe 72 hours out, you do not get charged. Now, a lot of the resorts though, especially peak summer seasons, you are charging a deposit, okay? So it's, you need to explain that. Um, but you may be able to, you know, kind of work them in and say, well, if you like, I can lock that in for you now. Oh, really, how would that work? Well, we do charge a one night deposit, but since you're calling for August, you can cancel up until 45 days out, and this way it's locked in. Okay, or maybe you hold it for you confirm it now, and maybe they have within the next 24 hours to cancel. All right, but it's kind of easing them along the way. Next up, we have the secure it for you close. This works really well for most types of callers. Um, I've always liked this one because it presents the attempt to secure the sale as a courtesy we're being extended to them because we are so nice we want to help them make a reservation right the key here is to leave the next step with you all right see he's all happy he's smiling and ready to help you secure your vacation so he will say may i secure it for you may i reserve it for you we do not want to say do you want to book it and that's what those call center people said yesterday to my participants in my reservation class at the Charles Hotel. You want to book it? We're almost sold out. You sure you don't want to book it? I can book it now. Let's book it, book it, book it. First of all, book is not a very accommodating word, all right? Now, sometimes the caller may use the word book, but really book is an industry term, all right? And a lot of your vacation people, they're not booking, sounds like bookmaker, <laughs> that you get booked. <laughs> I don't think I want to get booked on my vacation. Um, so we want to say secure, hold, reserve. And the key also then is the word secure versus book. The other key here is may I do it for you. Now, if you say, do you want to secure it? They have to think and do something. But if we say, may I secure that for you? Doesn't that sound nicer? Let me give you another example. 
How many of you have been out to a restaurant? And you know, a lot of restaurants actually like it now. They have the menus, have the calories on there, you know, because I, I try to watch those calories. And then, you know, the waiter says, do you want dessert? And we're like, no, I'm good. I don't need anything. But on the other hand, if she comes up and says, how was that entree? May I tell you about our dessert specials? Can I show you our desserts? We're all like, okay, we'll look. And the next thing you know, we're talking to our table mate and we're like, do you want to share something? Can we have two forks, right? But if they say, do you want dessert? No, no, nobody wants dessert. But if they say, man, what can I bring you for dessert? We're like, hmm, it's a little more suggestive and that's what we want to do. Small change in wording, okay, but if you've been in this series, you know it's the little details, the nuance of selling that makes all the difference, okay? Now, third example, choice of options. Traditional sales trainers love this. I also think it works good when you presented two or more options, and we wanna ask to secure the sale in a way that assumes they're going to say yes to one of those two options. Okay, so you can say, which of those may I secure for you? Or did you prefer a traditional or a deluxe option? All right, so it's the either or close. And that's what we want to do, um, especially when you've discussed in detail the view, the partial view and the full view, or the garden view and ocean view, or the mountain view and resort view, or the high floor and the low floor or the three bedroom house and the four bedroom house, okay? So which of those can I secure for you, all right? And then finally, you have this one here, and that's for that color that gives you a strong buying signal. That, going back to the one earlier that says, perfect, yes, that sounds great, okay? Essentially, what this individual just told you is they already said an implied yes, okay? Do not make a customer ever <laughs> in your career. Do not make a customer say yes two times, all right? When you get a yes, you already heard it. We're gonna assume they're buying, all right? And you're gonna say, they say, that sounds perfect. All right, Mr. Kennedy, is that K-E-N-N-E-D-Y, correct? And that was for arrival June the 20th, 20th, which is a Saturday, correct? All right, and we just start easing them right along. So. Draw close, offer, secure the sales close, choice of options close, or lastly, the assumptive close. Whichever one you use, okay, just be sure to ask. Now, I do hope that you give thought and you look at the nuance of selling because a small change in wording has a big impact. So pick the one that feels right in that call, okay? Managers, supervisors, give your team flexibility but we want to be loose in how they ask it but we want to be firm that we always need to ask all right now hopefully they say okay sure here's my credit card and we move on but sometimes they're going to resist you if they do they will resist your first attempt do not give up too easily see he's all positive he's not worried he's used to getting a no don't give up all right, remember they called you. Now what you say next will vary according to how they say no to your first primary close, okay? So when you use a closing attempt, what they say next is gonna determine what you say next. You with me so far, everybody? I know you're not checking email in the middle of my webinar, right? Okay, so some callers simply decline they don't even say why, they just say, okay, I'll call back, thanks. You say, may I secure that for you? Nope, I'll call back, thanks. Don't let them hang up without at least trying to use a re-engagement question to continue the conversation. Now, now, sometimes they literally hang up on you. I get it, I know, I hear that. But most of the time, they're gonna be polite. They'll say, okay, I'll call back. Don't believe it, all right? Try to re-engage them right now, see? She's not giving up either. So you want to say, before I let you go, okay? And that's kind of your transitional word there. Before I let you go, is there something you're looking for that I have not mentioned yet? Or before I let you go, 
Does that option sound like it's going to meet your needs? Or before I let you go, is that rate within your travel budget? You're, you're essentially saying, talk to me. Don't hang up on me. Okay. We have to push hard today because business is competitive. You're already having a good summer. Your hotel is already pretty occupied, but it's the last 10% of occupancy that really makes the difference between a break-even summer and a profitable summer. Okay. So before I let you go, how does that sound? All right. Try to get them to re-engage with you. Next up, sometimes the caller says they're going to keep shopping around or that they're going to look online. Okay, so maybe going back to the previous one, you say, how does that sound? And they say, well, I'm going to keep shopping. Or maybe when you say, which of those can I secure for you? They tell you right then without even you needing to prompt them. They say, well, I'm going to check around a bit more. All right. So don't let them hang up. We're going to say a few different options you can use here. You can offer to check alternative dates and rooms you can say well by the way now you're going to say you know going back to the previous one how does that sound well it's a little high well you know i can check other rooms for you because you know the partial view still has a great view the resort view is the same room it just has a different view and you know there's so much to do here you may not be really in the room looking at the view during the day anyway um or you might say, well, keep in mind the rate I quoted you includes, and let them know what it includes. Let them know that, you know, if your hotel has extras, if you have uh, anything built into the room, if you have included, if your quote includes hotel fee, internet fee, resort fee, parking, taxes. Remember, online shopping can be misleading, and sometimes, you know, see the actual price to you click they click to the next button in the shopping cart where it adds in the taxes and the fees um, i know because i have used all the apps i've used airbnb i've used home away and and you know you get an idea of the price but um now actually some one of those is not too bad airbnb tends to tell you up front but some of them do not tell you until you get to the next screen so remember to say the rate I'm quoting you is the final price, and keep in mind that includes, all right? Also, if you're selling, selling trip insurance, if you have included that, some companies are adding that in and making it an opt-out basis. Let them know this includes the insurance, okay? It is optional, and we highly recommend it. Um, also, reassure them. This is really key, folks. Reassure them the rates and the accommodations you're quoting right now are the very best options. And, and I assume that they are because hopefully your revenue manager at a resort or your marketing manager at a rental company is smart enough to know we want to keep our rates in rate parity. All right. Now, sometimes it's a struggle and we might have a situation where they look on a certain OTA and it appears to be lower. But in that case, I hope you're empowered to match, verify and match those rates. So let them know, by the way, the rates that we're quoting right here are our lowest rates. If for some reason you end up seeing something less, please let us know because we always offer the lowest rates here automatically. Okay. So I have some, I actually have that written out for you. Um, and, and by the way, as Jay mentioned, this webinar is recorded. Um, so you will be able to get a copy of, of that via the link. But you may even want to take a screen capture of some of these or take a picture of your computer. Because you can say, just to let you know, we always offer the best available rates right here in in-house reservations. And the good thing is, I can put you right into our reservation system. Now, you know, some people are fans of the OTA, the online travel agency like Expedia, Booking.com, being the biggest. But most people that have called you, there's a reason they call. Because they feel more comfortable, especially when a vacation plans. They feel more comfortable booking in-house on site, okay? And so putting you directly into the reservation system is a really big plus. That's why, by the way, and I know we've covered this in other web webinars, when you work in reservations and you answer and they say, hello, where are you? Are you there? Oh, good. 
you're not at a call center, right? Now, nothing against call centers. We may have call centers on the call today, but uh, even at a call center, you can say, well, I'm in a different building or I'm in a different location, but I can put you directly into the reservation system. Okay. All right. Now, they might just try to hang up on you. You're going to re-engage them. Before I let you go, is there anything you're looking for? They might say, I'm going to shop online, and you're going to say, well, we have the best rates here. We can lock it in. Or third reason right here, this is kind of funny when you think about it. Some callers use, and this is one thing that has not changed in 30 years of doing training. They still say, I'm not ready to book right now because I have to check with my wife. Okay. See this guy right here? Now, being a married guy, I know it's actually kind of smart. Okay. He might actually be checking with his wife. But if it's the wife on the phone, she's going to say she's checking with her husband. Why do I not believe that? Okay. I really don't believe she's going to ask him. She's probably going to tell him, honey, guess where we're going. But regardless, uh, the truth is they're going to use this. Or they might say, I've got to check with my boss to make sure my vacation's approved. Or I've got to check with my kids for their summer camp schedule. Okay. Now, some will be honest and say they're shopping around, but a lot of people give these little kind of white lies that they're checking with someone else. So in that case, what I want everybody to do this summer, okay, because we need that last 10% of occupancy, I want us to create urgency, okay, and I want us to remove barriers to booking right now. Finally, I want us to ask one more time, all right? So let's put all that together in one uh, phrase you can say well that's fine go ahead and check with your husband but just to let you know miss availability is limited you know that rate could go up and you can personalize this and say you know I had a gentleman yesterday he called back it was sold out or you know our rates do change according to availability or we have people looking online right now and there's five other agents sitting next to me, and I hate to see you miss out, but I can lock it in for now, and that way you can always call back to cancel. Now, I realize being in the summer in the resort business, if they're calling for July 4th and it's already June 13th, you may not offer this option. But if they're calling post Labor Day dates, okay, or maybe that last two weeks in August where we know we probably are not selling out, Okay, or if they're calling far enough out, even maybe the first week in August, because we still have time, you may be able to offer to hold that reservation for them for 24 hours. That's where track calls rocks, because now we hold the reservation, we send them an email saying, very nice talking with you, Douglas, about your summer plans for your vacation. We have it on hold until midnight tomorrow. Then you put it in your lead stream. Then you give a call tomorrow and you say, Hello there, Mr. Kennedy. It's Douglas calling. I just wanted to follow up and let you know we're holding it till midnight tonight. Um, okay, so you could put it on a courtesy hold or uh, depending on your policy, maybe you charge them now, but maybe your company allows them within the first 24 hours to cancel without penalty for a full refund. Okay, that's actually how the airlines do it. And by the way, the airlines do that because it's federal law, not because they're being nice. But you're doing it because it's a smart decision if the person is calling for dates that are far enough out that we can take that home off the market or take that room off the market for 24 hours. Because the odds are, if somebody makes the commitment and they go ahead and book the reservation, they're probably going to keep it because it's easier than going through the whole thing again, all right? And so finally, offer one more time. So don't just create urgency and remove barriers. We have to then say, so with that in mind, Mr. Kennedy, why don't you let me lock this in for you now? Or are you sure I can't lock that in now? Or let's do this now. Okay. So to put it all together, we have secured that for you, Mr. Kennedy. Well, you know, I better check with my wife. Well, that's fine. I understand. But just to let you know, you know, the rates could change and availability is very limited. It's such a great time of year to visit. We can lock it in now though, sir. And if you like, that way you'll have uh, everything set up. And this way, so long as you cancel up until 30 days out, which gives you 
another seven, seven days. Um, that way you're all set here. So with that in mind, why don't, we, why don't we just go ahead and lock this in for you now? Now, you might go through everything perfectly like Doug Kennedy just said, and the person still said, no, thanks, I'll call you back, all right? Now, in that case, oh, well, guess what? We have track pulse, right? And if we can use proactive follow-up, if you don't get the sale, especially when the hotel, for those of you who are selling longer average stays, higher average rates, so you try the first close, you try the second close, they still say no. Hey, before I let you go, let me follow up with an email, all right? Or if it's somebody calling about a higher rated accommodation in multiple rooms, all right? So in other words, the person that wants to book several rooms or the suite or the premium category home, all right? Um, so in that case, you have track pulse, say, you know what? Let me shoot you over an email to uh, recap everything we discussed, and I'll follow up as well. What's your email? So again, ask in an assumptive way. So then instead of just sending a link through a lot of the property management systems allow you just to hit a button and send a generic email. That's good, but that's not great. We want to be great, right? To be great, we're going to say briefly a sentence or two. Dear Mr. Kennedy, so wonderful talking to you about your last vacation before your son and his buddies go off to college. Um, below is the information. Just that one little thing to reach through that computer screen and make that connection and shake hands with your prospect, all right? And then you put them in the note, put in the note. And by the way, I'll reach out to you tomorrow to see what else we can do to host your vacation. You know, people like, to do business, the people that want their business. There's something humbling about asking for the sale that is beyond just a sales technique. You know, when a person says, you know what, what can I do to win this opportunity? What can I do to win your sale? We really wanna host your vacation. That means something in today's world, all right? So as we recap then, before I turn it back to Jay, we have covered overcoming the objections and securing that sale. But I want you to think about this summer just how important your job is in sales. You have a company that is that needs you to bring currency to flow into your organization to flow back out, okay? To the owners of the vacation homes, if you're a rental company. To the owner of the mortgage of your hotel, if you're a hotel. We need the currency to flow out to the front desk crew, to the bell staff, wait staff, bartenders, housekeepers need you for a job. Okay, and perhaps also, you know, if you have a goal to meet or an incentive, but you also want to do it because it's the right thing to do for your guests. You're helping people plan what is the most important event of their calendar year. I know I'm looking forward to my July 4th. I'll go home to Kentucky. I'll be bringing my kids home and my wife, and actually we're even bringing the dog this year. There's nothing more important to us than that summer vacation. Okay, and yes, it costs a lot of money, but it also is our precious time because it's really hard to get everyone's vacation schedule aligned. So when you secure that sale, you help the currency flow to your company. You help meet your revenue goal for your department, okay? And also you help that guest. So thank you for your time. 38 minutes, I think is our shortest webinar yet, <laughs> but I know you're busy. Thank you for carving out time today. We had, uh, I think close to hundred locations registered for this webinar. Uh, so, Jay, thank you for hosting this and promoting this for our industry to help make us all better at what we do. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much, Doug, and thank you to everyone who joined us today. If you have any questions or are interested in learning more about our resortsandlodges.com and track solutions, please contact us at marketing at resortsandlodges.com. Have a great day, everyone.